So, what's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today, we are taking a closer look at the top 11 secret tips and tricks that you didn't know about in Albion Online. And like you can see in the title, I promise you that even if you have been playing this game for many years now, at least few of these tips even you did not know or haven't thought about whatsoever. So, with all this said, if you are ready for the knowledge, then let's get right into it. So, then starting with an easy and simple trick, if you go into a corrupted dungeons, all around the map you will find these small sleeping creatures, or I like to call them the traps. And these so called the traps you can use in many different ways. The first thing that you can do is go in front or behind the trap and auto attack it once. This will blow up the trap and push you in one or the other direction on where you were standing. So if you ever get chased by another player or you wanna catch him then this is a great way to get boosted and gain extra distance. Then another way to use it and which is my favorite one, when you fame farm or basically kill mobs if you find one of these traps close by you can lead the mobs close to it and then again auto attack it once and when it blows up it will do very low damage to you but remove at least half a health of all the mobs standing close to it. This works even on lava traps as well. Just hit it once and see the enemy mob die in seconds. And last but not the least, the last third way to use this trap is that again if you are running or chasing someone and you have a dash ability or for example the dagger W ability where you have to hit the target to dash, well you can use these traps as a target. And it will count as well. This works on these small traps and as well the slowness traps which are almost at every crossroad. So in conclusion, make these traps work for you rather than against you. And the things that damage you, the enemy gets damaged as well. So use it at your advantage and have fun. Okay, for a second tip, this is more like a recommendation, but I strongly suggest to use it. So I have personally seen hundreds of different players using the auction house. And by mistake, misclicking on the sort item by price button and not looking and buying an item worth 1 million or even hundreds of millions of silver. When actually that item is worth 1 to 2 thousand silver. And by a mistake, now they have been scammed. So the best way to protect yourself is especially when you have millions of millions of worth of silver, just go to the gold market and change that silver for gold. Now every time you go to a shop and misclick, you won't lose money because the game will tell you that you don't have enough silver. And any time when you need that silver, again, just go to the gold market and change back the gold to silver. What I usually is do is convert 90% of my silver in gold and keep 10% silver on me to buy gear or whatever else I want. And the best thing about this strategy is not only that you can protect yourself, but as well, when you buy gold, the price just keeps on going up. So now, for example, 10 million silver you put into gold is passively making you money. And when you change it back, it might be 11 million silver or even more. But then, of course, if we talk about positive things, I have to mention the one downside of this method, which is that there are limits on the transactions that you can make in gold market. So normal free-to-play players can trade 500 gold per silver every 24 hours. Then, if you have bought gold for real-life money, then you can trade 2,000 gold every Every day. And lastly, if you have spent more than $30 in this game, then you can trade up to 4000 gold per day. And if you want to learn more or just for further information, check this link. But in conclusion, even just trading silver for 500 gold every day will be very smart and you will protect yourself and make passive money in the long run. I remember when the game just came out and 1 gold was selling for 100 or 200 silver. And now years later, 1 gold is worth almost 3000 silver. So for sure, don't miss out on this opportunity. Then moving over to the third tip in which I will show you another secret way that you can make money. Which I can confidently say that 95% of all Albion players don't even know that exists. So when you are in one of the royal cities, open your minimap by pressing N key and move your mouse cursor through each crafting station. And of course, you usually take a closer look at the usage fees. But this time forget about it and pay attention to the section where it says reward per 1000 nutrition. And we can see 2100 silver in this example. So in this game you can use any food to feed some crafting stations and make money from it. And how it works, basically a crafting station owner maybe goes on a vacation or gets too lazy and doesn't want to keep on feeding his crafting stations. So he enables the ability to pay other players to feed it for him. So the way that you can profit out of this is to go to all royal cities which you can do in seconds by teleporting naked and then look through different crafting stations and pay attention which ones have that reward per 1000 nutrition and then write down or remember the prices. 
Then go to the auction house and compare prices for food. A lot of times the crafting station owners themselves have checked the auction house so they will put the price a bit higher. So any player can just go to the auction house, buy food and make few hundred silver per each food. And basically by doing nothing you can make hundreds of thousands of silver by just buying and feeding buildings. Or even better, if you make your own food in your island then instead of selling on the auction house, put it into the buildings and make extra profit. The easiest way to check food nutrition is to click on the food item and here above the item power you can see the nutrition that one food will give you. So what you can do is buy cheap tier food with high nutrition and place it into buildings. And last but not the least, the way you feed buildings is by going to the crafting station, then clicking on the crafting station's avatar and here in the food supply square drag the food and click submit. One thing that you need to be careful of is first of all, check if the price that crafting station's owner has is fair and if you will make money. And second of all, make sure that before clicking submit, where you can see the silver rewards, you can see silver. Because some buildings won't get used often and they will run out of silver to give you. So just make sure that the price is fair for 1000 nutrition and that the station has silver that they can give you. And then now you are ready to make some easy money. So, we just talked about how you can make money by using crafting stations, but as well I need to cover the dark side of crafting stations and how other players can scam you or make more money out of you. So, there has been a new way to scam new players, which is that a one specific player or few players buy collectively a crafting station in one of the popular cities and then they put super low usage fee to use it. So new players are like wow this is definitely the best station to use. But what they don't know is that very few but some players stand on their crafting stations 24 7 and wait for innocent players to come and start crafting and as soon as they do they change the usage fee from example 20 to 30 percent to 100 percent and even more. When you are crafting you already think that you found the best place and you don't pay attention on how much silver you are spending. So my advice is that if you compare a few crafting stations and most of them are for example around 49% usage fee and then there's just one with 15 or 20% then most likely it is a scam. And even if the station's owner is not standing on the crafting station then probably his friend or alt account that he has given the permissions to is and will try to make more money out of you. So don't fall for this and if a crafting station seems too good to be true then it probably is. So I just recommend to go for the second cheapest option which is similar price to all the other stations. And lastly if you still don't listen to me but go for the super cheapest station then at least pay attention each time you craft something and keep on checking the usage fee of the stations and see if it gets changed. Then as for the fifth tip, this one will be super basic and beginner friendly but I have to mention it. So if you are a new player that likes to play solo then for sure create your own guild. Not only you will be able to make up and have a cool name under your character but as well choose your own cape design and much more. The best thing about creating your own guild when you are playing solo is that first of all you can level up the guild and when your guild levels up you get siphoned energy which then you can exchange for silver. So basically how it works you open your guild menu, go to the last section where it shows the guild account. So my guild is a level 2 and here you can see the siphon energy that I have got as a reward. So you by easily playing the game can get the siphon energy for free. I personally have fame farmed and did some 1v1 corrupting dungeons for an hour or two and made few hundred thousand extra silver. If you just need money right away you can sell it or keep it and whenever you want to overcharge your gear just take them out of the guild and use them anywhere in the map. And lastly, besides all of this, when you make your own guild you can set the guild tax, which I have set to 5%. The good thing about this feature is that especially as a new player, if you ever run out of money and you are in the middle of for example in a black zone but you need cash to repair a gear piece or buy a black zone chest then just open your guild tab, go to the third section and here you can put or withdraw money. This is another good way to protect yourself against auction house scammers just in case you don't want to use the gold market option. So in conclusion, I always suggest for any type of player to be in a guild or create your own one and you will still get super cool features that will help you a lot. 
Okay, so now for the next step, we have a 500 IQ website which you can use and make money if you are an island farming in Albion. So, use this link and it will open a huge calculator which you can determine and calculate any type of animal breeding, potions, or even food farming profits. So, in a quick summary, I suggest to just go to the website and click here help icon, which will describe the website and what each and every single thing means. But basically, you on the top left, select the city you want to sell your farming item, then click on the price average, then mastery skills you have and then click show me button. And this now will calculate everything and how much profit you can make with or without using premium. Is this a good farming item to sell? And much more. As well here on the top you can see the same tool to determine what are the best things to craft and much more. So if you were looking for the best tool to use and that can help you make money in Albion, then here it is. Then as for the 7th tip, this time we will go over the best strategy to attack a corrupted dungeons. So when you match up against a random player or attack his dungeon, most of the time you will spawn in a very weird and awkward spot. So what you simply want to do is stand still till the bubble runs out and you get your cooldowns and then just like in any normal dungeon, just keep on killing mob groups one by one and find the shortest and closest path that is empty. So for example, here in the gameplay, I was invading a player. Right away when I spawned, I checked my minimap and saw a few ways to go to the empty middle, where a player is probably standing. So I decided to go here on the right, because on the left, there was a mini boss and a lot more mobs. So I took the right route, and as I had a run on my boots, I ran past few mobs and stopped two or three groups between an empty spot, where there's a possibility of a player. And then I kept on killing mobs one by one, not wasting my cooldowns and always having one mob in case I see a player and I need to reset the mob to be ready for the player attack. But the most important thing about attacking is that never use your 60 second cooldowns or the cape. For example, my cape has a 2 minute cooldown and I know that it will activate if I press my E ability. So I never use it when clearing mobs and yeah sure, my clearing speed is slower but I always have my abilities and I'm ready for an enemy attack. So in conclusion, always have at least one mob between you and empty spot because there might be a player waiting and if he sees you on mobs he will just rush you. So if you have that one mob in front of you, the mobs that you're already killing, you'll be able to kill faster or just reset and he will have to take damage before getting close to you. And of course lastly, don't rush anything but just take your time killing mob by mob till you find your enemy. Okay, so my next tip might be weird and controversial, but at this point, who cares? Most of you probably never thought about this, so here it goes. If you ever gather or just run around the world and you see gankers attacking you or chasing you, one of the best things to escape them, besides the obvious ways of running to an entrance and etc., is that if you are in front of your gankers like 4 to 5 seconds and they keep on popping on your screen and disappearing, but you probably know that there are his friends waiting on the map entrance or something close to you, then what you can do is while you're running, find a solo dungeon or even a group dungeon in open world and enter it and you will get a protection bubble. If the enemy was 4 to 5 seconds behind you, he will never know and won't think that you just entered the solo dungeon. But let's say he saw you and now he's entering the dungeon as well. Then the best thing is that when he appears on your screen, he will have cooldowns on his abilities. So you just leave the dungeon and get back on your horse with full health and run away. And just by doing this, you will be one loading screen further than the ganker. And you will get your mount full health again and give yourself few seconds of breeding time. And especially for me, I have decent PC and my loading screens are very quick. So I can load into a zone if we enter at the same time the dungeon like 2 or 3 seconds faster. And if the ganker doesn't have that good of a PC, you will get an advantage over him by just using this strategy. Entering a random dungeon and leaving it right away has helped me a lot of times to run away and escape even 10 player ganking groups. So try it out and thank me later. Just of course, don't confuse corrupted dungeons for solo dungeons. So only enter green small dungeons and not the red ones. And now for one of the last steps on my list we have the small feature or way to use auction house. Okay, so I have heard so many players for example trying to buy a skin name but it's called like a nightshade unicorn. Or for example you're buying this Trina del Bordock seed but there's no way at least for me as I'm not a native English speaker to remember its name. So instead of writing it down or whatever, I just simply open my auction house and then open my inventory and click on that item which I want to buy more and then drag it to the left side of the auction house tab 
and now instead of butchering the names like 20 times and getting frustrated, instead I can see their names and I can search it up easily in Auction House and buy it. This might be a very basic tip especially for players with good memory, but for all my not native English speakers or just new players who want to buy items with weird or complicated names, then well here's an easy way to do it. Then for my next step, this is another beginner friendly one, but I can't tell you enough how many players a day comment on my videos or even in Albion online chat about the things or builds I'm using and what is the best item or ability to have. So first of all, always and I repeat always, use the inspect tool, which by selecting a player and pressing Y key, you can see the gear that the player is using. And then even by clicking on that specific gear, you can see the abilities he has selected. My biggest recommendation for newer players is to use the inspect tool before every single fight. And even if you die, you will remember the player you just fought. And the next time, if you inspect another enemy and he's using the same things, you will already have an idea on what abilities and how will the enemy attack you. And lastly, every single time you die, you can inspect again by what build you died, how much item power the enemy had, and maybe if you really like the build, you can copy it. This inspect tool is one of the best things Albion Online ever made and you can easily check the top player leaderboards and see what are the best of the best players using and much more. So my biggest tip or overall suggestion is to use the inspect tool 24-7 and even after dying by going to your character stat page and then going to the death page you can see a few recent builds that killed you and what they were using. And with all of this said, I recently made a review of Albion Online and what my experience has been like for the past few years. And I got one comment from a bunch of players that was very frustrating, so I thought it would be a great last tip for the video. So Albion Online is not a PvP game. You can easily play the game for many months or even years, not ever entering the PvP zones. Even if you plan to play this game a lot, you do not, and I repeat, you do not ever have to lose your gear, even if you want to do PvP. If you are a gatherer, you can easily farm from blue or yellow zones and you don't have to farm tier 7 materials to get tier 8 gatherer. You can easily only chill in yellow zones and get your gathering skill to the highest. And lastly, even if you have 4 more friends for hellgates or you want to try out the 1v1 dungeons, you can easily enter them from blue or yellow zones and the best thing is that when you die, you don't lose gear. And the same thing applies in yellow zone faction warfare, so you can have even 100 vs 100 fights with zero chance of losing gear. So, in my conclusion, Albion is not a hardcore PvP game. And if you really don't want to, you don't have to do PvP and risk losing any of your items. I personally think that you are missing out on one of the most fun parts of the game and you will definitely not have the best and efficient way of making money or leveling up. But you can easily play this game and never do a single PvP activity. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or different tips and tricks that you would recommend to other players, then feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy, peace. Yo, I ain't here for the money.